بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم I'd like to welcome everyone uh, to this week's session of Dhikr and Fikr uh, By being here we're seeking enlightenment We're seeking the nur, the light of ma'rifah of getting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the light of guidance. And the main form of guidance that we're seeking is in knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rectifying our relationship with him. Now, in order to do that, in order to receive that light, because Allah nuru samawati wa al he is the light of the heavens and the earth, the main impediment is internal, right? So we are the ones who closed off our chest, who closed off our, our ears, we closed off our hearts, and we created barriers. These barriers are not natural, right? We, we have erected them. And so, inshallah, we are going to talk today about certain uh, wijha, certain windows, certain futuhat, certain openings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, avenues that Allah facilitates for you in order not for you to reach him, but rather for you to allow him to reach you. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, inshallah. So we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, makes this beloved to us because you get what you seek. So we reach the eighth hikmah. And we'll read it in Arabic and the translation from the book that we have translated by Dr. Tariq. إِذَا فَتَحَ لَكَ وِجْهَةً مِنَ التَّعَرُّفِ فَلَا تُبَالِ مَعْهَا إِنْ قَلَّ عَمَلُكَ فَإِنَّهُ مَا فَتَحَ لَكَ مَا فَتَحَهَا لَكَ إِلَّا وَهُوَ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَتَعَرَّفَ إِلَيْكَ أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ التَّعَرُّفَ هُوَ ال... هو مَوْرِدُهُ عَلَيْكَ وَالْأَعْمَالَ أَنْتَ مُهْدِيهَا إِلَيْهِ وأينما تهديه إليه مما هو مورده عليك Do not be concerned if he bestows on you knowledge despite your pious actions being few. He bestowed upon you since he desires to manifest it to you. Knowledge comes to you from him but actions are dedicated by you to him. How can you compare what he gives to you to what you give? By now, you have probably noticed a pattern. We began by talking about purification, about intentions. Um, we talked about uh, certain baggage that we bring. Then he shifted and talked about the promises that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes and not hesitating or being doubtful. And then now we're shifting, and we talked about wasail, we talked about taking the means, but not relying on them, in the sense that we think that the means are what's going to cause the outcome to happen. And now we have shifted to a bunch of hikam, uh, aphorisms, pieces of wisdom that are connected to our a'mal. And this one is especially important, and especially dense. So what he's saying is that we need the a'mal, of course. Right, so um, it's actually our amal that allow us to get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But despite that, pay no attention. Don't give any weight to your amal that preceded you in the past. So it doesn't mean that amal are unimportant, because in fact those amal will allow us to get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They will allow us to purify ourselves. They will allow us to improve ourselves. But don't measure the future openings. Don't allow your past actions to dictate your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So they are not uh, going to... The, the relationship is not direct. That, okay, I have done these acts of worship and therefore I did so much good deeds so I will have a greater connection or I did a lot of sins and I made a lot of mistakes so now I feel the weight of that burden so now I can't get better I cannot be better I'm stuck don't allow the past to define you in simple terms right so this, this is very difficult actually for us to do because many of us that is actually how we measure things right um, so part of that is understanding that these futuhat these these wijha, right? So that wijha is, is an opening 
uh, a door, a window, a connection that Allah places in your path. And we're going to talk about it a little bit. And sometimes the wijah is not something which is very pleasant. It could be some a great hardship that Allah causes you to endure. And even though it's shrouded by that calamity, the reality of that thing is that there's great benefit uh, in there. So then he says, after he says that, فَلَا تُبَالِ مَعْهَا That don't pay any attention, don't pay any heed, don't be concerned. Then he said, أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ Right? That did you not know that at تَعْرُفْ That knowledge comes to you from him, but at Actions are dedicated by him to you. So what that means is that in truth, he has opened up that ta'aruf. He has opened up that opportunity, that, abil that, that opportunity and, and uh, avenue for you to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his desire to make himself known to you. So I'm going to simplify that, inshallah. That means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes things to happen in your life that establish a connection with him. And the reason that happens is not because of your a'mal, is not because of your actions. Rather, it is because of Allah's irada. It's Allah's desire, Allah's choice, Allah's wisdom, Allah's decree that he wants to be known to you. So that is a blessing, meaning that you're not the one necessarily in the driver's seat deciding on that connection by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but rather this is a hiba rabbaniya. This is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the bestower of all grace. And then he said, did you not know that he is the one who presented the knowledge of himself to you? And this is a very deep wisdom here, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what has he gifted us? He gifted us with knowledge of him. That is what Allah has presented to you. Right? And what is it that we have presented towards Allah? Our ama? That's it. We have only presented with our deeds. And then he says, what a difference. What a difference between these two. And uh, Dr. Tariq, he, he translated here. He said, wa'ayna. In Arabic it says, wa'ayna. And where is it? So the way that Dr. Tariq translated, he says, how can you compare? Right? Because there is a, uh, this is a kind of slub. This is a, a type of speech that expresses uh, a ta'ajub. Ajib. This is amazing. It's a wonderment. That how can you compare what you are presenting to Allah, which are your amal, and what he is presenting to you, which is knowledge of himself. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting something that valuable and that meaningful, do you think that it is predicated on your measly amal? Do you think that that is the thing which is opening Allah's hidayah, your guidance? His guidance is because you did this action, because you did this particular prayer, or vice versa, because you didn't pray? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he graces the person whom he loves and he graces the person whom he doesn't love. But Allah only grants guidance and this ta'aruf, this ma'rifah of knowing Allah to the one that he loves. So this, this is a good question. What is the difference? The knowledge. So the knowledge in this halaqa, on what, this is only for Wednesday. When I, on Wednesday, when I say knowledge, I'm talking about knowledge of Allah, right? I'm not talking about all of the knowledge because there's, there's so many fields. And even within the Islamic sciences, there are many fields. But on Wednesday, when I say knowledge, I'm talking about ma'rifah, knowledge of Allah. And believe me, there, I mentioned it earlier, there are so many people, you see, we saw this, a lot of us, we saw it in our grandparents. Right, we saw it in the earlier generations. Very simple people. My grandmother, she passed away last year. She couldn't even read Bangla. She couldn't read Bengali, her own language. She couldn't read. The only language that she could read is Arabic. That's it. She never learned how to read any other language. 
neither Hindi or Bangla or Urdu or any other language, just in order to read the Quran, right? So, and she doesn't even have a middle school education. But if you sit and talk to her, then you will think that she's an educated lady. Because there are people who have ulul albab, Allah describes in the Quran, they have a lub, they have a deep contemplation. They're people of weight. And then there are other people who are highly educated and they have lots of accolades and lots of de degrees. Allah says, فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا These people are of no consequence. They are, have no weight on يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ on يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ On the day in which nobody, no wealth and no children will be of any avail. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except for the one who comes to Allah with a salim heart, with a sound heart. So when we talk about the knowledge here, they are very simple people who don't have any education, but they have multiple PhDs in ma'rifa. They know Allah. Even there are some simple people, some poor people. The Prophet him, he said, Allah marzuqni. He said, oh Allah, enrich me with hubb al mas Inni as'aluka hubb al masakin. Give me the love of the poor people, right? So Prophet he never asked to be poor, right? He doesn't want, that's not, we shouldn't ask for that. But hubb al masakin is a great thing in our religion. Loving the poor people is part of our religion. Right, we don't want to be poor, but we want to love those who are poor and the masakin and the aitam and the orphans and so on and so forth. Right, because these are people who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not all, but collectively, these are people who are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you see, some people they don't have the knowledge of religion, they cannot give you a fatwa, but they ask between the, them, they make a dua and Allah answers it without any hijab. There's no barrier. When they ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's granted. So this is a kind of connection that, that we all aspire to. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's giving you that gift, which is the greatest thing that a human being can ever receive from Allah. And we wish it for all of humanity. That's why as Muslims, you know, even in the thick of conflict, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, only prayed for the destruction of the enemy collectively in order to gain victory. But he never uh, used to pray for the destruction and condemnation of people individually. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us to punish us. Allah loves, he is al-wadud, he is the all-loving. So he doesn't want to, even the greatest criminals, Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reluctantly punishes them. Not because they don't deserve it. They, indeed, anyone who deserves it actually deserves even more punishment than, than what they receive. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted us with that guidance, that which will give us success in this world as well as in the akhirah. And what do we present? Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْدٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Whatever good that we do, we are presenting it for who? For your own selves, for your own souls. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ The next ayah, مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقِ Allah is al-ghani. He is free and independent of all needs and all wants. I don't want any risk from them. وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَيُّ طَعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقِ Surely Allah, He is a razzaq the quwwah the one with all power al matin the one who is firm so i i really love this expression when he says wa aina ma tuhdi tuhdiyahu ilayhi what is it that you gift to him and what is the thing that he brings to you so pay no attention let's talk a little bit about that to the actions that preceded don't measure it to this opening i think we have to talk about it especially for the younger generation for all the millennials and Gen Z that are all connected, this is especially for you, that we have a faulty assumption about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how he deals with us. We presume to know how Allah deals with us, but the reality is far from it. Many of us, we have written ourselves off. 
because we don't define ourselves. We don't, you know, like some of the people in the older generation, they say, oh, we're a religious family, that I'm a very religious person. Younger people, they don't say that anymore, right? So many of them, they have written themselves off. So many of us, we actually deprive ourselves of opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give to us to get close to him. So um, Ibn Ajiba, uh, I'm sorry, not Ibn Ajiba, see the Ahmad Zarruq has a commentary on this and he mentions three of these wijhas. The first wijha is that he allows you to get to know something about yourself. That's why it's a weak hadith, but man arafa nafsahu, that whoever knows himself, then knows his Lord. The meaning is sound. The, we, the chain is, uh, of the hadith is weak, but the meaning is correct. Right? That if you know yourself, what is it that you discover? You discover Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is it that you realize about yourself? The more that you look into the human being, you realize how وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Allah says He created the human being weak. But a lot of the, we talked about this actually in our tafsir class yesterday. What is the da'af? What is the weakness in the human being? Right? Is the weakness in the human being something physical? Because then there are lots of Allah's creation that are weaker than the human being. The weakness of the human being is in its impetuousness. The weakness is in the fact that we can be very determined to do something, something can happen, and we can be guided by our desire in just a moment. That we are shahwani, we are driven by the shahawat, by these desires. So understanding your weak condition, your impoverished condition before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the first wajha, realizing that, that, Ya Allah, I'm in need of you. How many people go through their whole life without that realization, without that admission before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? People have so much ego, even with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, Inna ladina yastakbiruna an ibadati. Those who arrogate themselves from my worship. Sayyidina jahannam al So, what is the thing which prov uh, prevents people from praying? They don't want, they, they don't enjoy that feeling of inkisar, that feeling of brokenness. But believe me, if you expose your full weakness state, weak state, your impoverished state before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will only elevate you with other people. Because that is something which exists only between you and your Rabb, you and your sustainer. Then the second realization, the second wijha, is that creation has no harm or benefit for you. It's like the hadith of Ibn Abbas where he says, Ya ghulam, inni uhibbuk. He says, oh young man, inni u'allimuka kalimat. Sorry, I'm mixing it up with the hadith of Mu'ad. Let me start over. He says, Ya ghulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat. That allow me to teach you some very valuable words. And then he says, Ihfad Oh, you did this in the 40 hadith. You did this in the a couple few weeks ago. So you should be telling me then about the hadith. And then in the end of the hadith, then he tells Abdullah ibn Abbas, Wa'alam, and know that anna al ummata and the ummah here doesn't mean the Muslim ummah, it means all of human beings. Ijtama'at, if they were to gather together, they were to pool their resources. And yanfa'uka bi shay. Actually, in the hadith, he starts with darar first. If they all gather to harm you, they would never ever be able to harm you except with something that Allah has already written for you. And if they all were to gather in order to benefit you with something, they would never be able to benefit you except with something that was already written and inevitable to happen to you. The pens have been lifted and the ink has dried. So that realization, and all of us know it, every person in this gathering, everyone who's attending virtually, we know that everything has already been decreed. But that realization of that disattachment with the vicissitudes of daily life causes a person to feel empowered. 
because our emotional state is so connected to things going well and our fears about bad things happening. And as soon as you disconnect from that attachment and you realize that wijha, that no one has any power over you. Allah is the only one who is that in my hand, in your hand is my nafs. That my future, my happiness, my sadness, my success, my failure is biyadik al khair. It's all in your hand. So then you dis disconnect from everything else. Then the third one that Sidi Ahmed Zarruq mentioned, the third wijha, is knowing Allah. But not just knowing Allah in a general sense, but knowing that Allah is Al-Qahil, Al-Ghani, Al-Aziz, Al-Qawi. That He is the one that compels things to happen. That He is free of all need. He is mighty. He is strong. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do anything. That elevates, that wijha allows you to be like Musa. That innani ma'akuma asma'u wa ara. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only did he tell Musa and Harun, la takhafa, don't fear. Why should they not fear? I am with you. I am with you. So that ma'iyya of being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't mean that, like we mentioned before, that you're saying, oh Allah, I want this to happen, and that you're going to get it right away. It means that you know that everything which happens to you is exactly the way that Allah wants it to happen. And He is with you wherever you are. So that fatah, that opening, is anything which allows you to come to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the hard part. Which is that the things which humble you, in many cases, are the futuhat, are the opening. Because when do we come to realize Allah's might, His dominion, that He's capable, that He's dignified, that He's majestic, that He is strong? When do we see that? When do we realize Allah's power over us? When we go through tribulation. When we struggle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us the most about himself in periods of difficulty. And this is one of the great ironies. And this is not unique only to Muslims. You see it with non-Muslims. That the periods of greatest connection to Allah azza wa jal are in the moments of the greatest struggle. When a person goes through great grief, when you go through hardship, when you go through poverty, that's when you feel your need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatest. And that's when it's obligatory that you don't concern yourself and limit yourself to the things in the past. Why? Because a person who's living life looking in the rear view mirror is not looking into the future. So don't be so concerned with who you were. Be sahib al waqt. Be the person who is in the present. Because that way you're looking with excitement over that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for you in the future. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you know, He has some attributes which are jamali. They have a feature of beauty. And then there are other ones that are jalali, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows His majesty. And in reality, you actually... Many of us, when we actually are in a situation where Allah is showing himself to us, what do we do? Our thoughts are not, wow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing me something about himself. We don't think that. When something is happening in our lives, many times good things happen. <laughs> and, and what do we say? We say, oh, I'm not worthy of this. I don't deserve this. Right? So shaitan makes us think bad thoughts about ourselves because we think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's gifts are some way predicated on our worth there is no connection between how good you are and how much good deeds you did and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choosing you one of the beautiful verses in the Quran Allah says that he selects and chooses whom he wishes 
And he guides to him the one who returns back to him. So instead of accepting this minna, this gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pause, we write ourselves off. We say, no, 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 I can't, it must be a mistake. It must have been an accident. I can't, I can't be, I'm not that person. It's not for me. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sends you signs, but you miss it. Because you think like, oh, it's not supposed to come to me. And so we lack that iqbal ala Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending you something and the wires are not matching and you're not receiving it. You're not getting the signal. Signal is coming, but you're not receiving that signal. And part of it is the deeper cause for this issue is, you know, many of our relationships are transactional, right? So, you know, we, when we, with kids, we're like, okay, I took care of you when you're little, you're going to take care of me when I'm old. I mean, what kind of deal is this? This is not a, a, a deal, a transactional deal or a financial arrangement. This is predicated on love, right? Some people, their relationship with their spouse, it's also transactional. The, well, I did my part, so now you have to do your part. So we have corrupted our view of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have also made that transactional. So the idea that Allah is giving is predicated on my acting or not acting. This is fundamentally flawed. It is completely irrational that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, khaliqu kulli shay, the one that created everything, is going to make his gifts based on your a'mal. That makes no sense. So we have to stop telling ourselves that I'm worthless. We have to stop obsessing about the sins that we have committed. Because it gets in our head. We said, well, these eyes, they have seen so much haram. I made this mistake. I did this haram. We all have our baggage. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has covered us. He has given us that sitr. He shielded us in this world. Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't shield you in the akhirah? He shielded you your whole life. People only think good about you in this dunya. If he's shielding you in this world, inshallah, he's going to shield you in the akhirah. That means Allah wants good for you. Otherwise, why would that even happen? So Allah's opening is for a reason. Not everything is based on the past. This is an invitation. This is a grace. This is beauty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A couple examples. Bishr al-Hafi, the Bishr, the barefooted, he was the mayor of Basra. And uh, there was an ascetic, a Zahid, that uh, knocked on the door. And he asked the servant that he had that is he, uh, is he free or is he owned? This was in a time in which uh, slavery, of course, still existed. And, there, and if not, there are servants in any case. And so his servant asked him that, oh, there was so-and-so that asked whether you're free or, or you're not. And I laughed at him and I said, of course, you're, you're free. And when his servant said that to him, her words pierced his heart. Like, because he has a deeper ma'ani, he's not looking, just, he produced, I, it's such a simple question, are you free or are you enslaved, right? But it touched his heart. You know, sometimes a situation in life or certain words will touch your heart. It happened to Bishr al-Hafi. He ran out of his house to chase down that guy. with. He didn't have time to put his shoes on. That's why they called him Bishr al-Hafi, the barefooted Bishr. And he's the mayor of, of the city. He chases him down. And he says, Ushidukum, I bear witness to all of you that inni abd, that I am most surely a slave. Because in that moment, he's like, free? How can I be free? I am nothing beyond the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from that, he became one of the most famous thinkers in all of Islamic history. And I shared another story connected with him once in the khutbah last year, in which I mentioned... Uh, because he explained why he thinks this happened, that his life was turned around. And he picked up a piece of paper in which Allah's name was written and he raised it and he put it up. 
And then after that happened, he saw a, a dream from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have raised my name. And so from this day, I will raise you. And so that he was ennobled because of that act in a time in which he was a sinner and he was far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second story is about Malik ibn Dina, who's also one of the most famous uh, scholars and thinkers in Islamic history. Both of them are from the second century, so pretty early on in Islamic history. And now Malik ibn Dinar is an even more extreme example because he was a drunkard. He was a very belligerent, abusive type of man. And Allah, tajalla, you know, tajalla bi jalalihi, as we mentioned, Allah has his aspects of jamal and he has his aspect of jalal. And so in loss, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away our loved ones, then he's showing us his jalal, right? He took away his daughter who was only five years old. And she was so beloved to him, the most beloved person to him at all. And when that happened, Malik, he said that, I swear that I'm going to, to drink so much alcohol. I will be so inebriated that I will drink until I've completely passed out. He swore he was going to get completely wasted. Then he went to sleep because he passed out. He was unconscious. He, he did do that. And he dreamt in his sleep that there was a serpent running after him. And he ends up uh, in front of his daughter. And his daughter in the dream, this five-year-old, um, uh, ends up saving him from the serpent in the dream. And then she says uh, the verse from Surah Al-Hadid. أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ that is it not the time that your heart becomes tranquil and thoughtful? To humble yourself, to become at, at peace. He hears this ayah. He rushes straight to the masjid. And this is after his entire life. He's lived a depraved life, very far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He joins the prayer. And guess what the imam is reciting? And he hears the exact same verse of Quran that his five-year-old daughter, who was saving him in the dream, was reciting. So look at the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spiritually elevates the person. And in reality, wasn't it his daughter that saved him from the hellfire and guided him? She really was the one that saved him. But in that moment of great loss, of great grief, you know, of burying his five-year-old daughter, he thought that this was the worst thing that had ever happened to him. But in reality, that moment, and this is very hard for people to say because it's very painful, it's very difficult, that was the best thing which had happened to Malik ibn Dina in his life. Because that was the thing that changed him. That was what caused him to click. So that grief was also a moment of qahr. It was a moment of, of grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can't choose these futuhat. We can't choose these openings. If Allah hated you, many of us, we have these feelings of unworthiness, of guilt. Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would allow you to join this kind of blessed gathering? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would put that feeling of ta'alluq, attachment to ICCP. If you love coming to the masjid, even just sitting here, reading a book, having coffee, and just being in this place, they are rijalul la wala bayun in which there are pious people who don't get swerved away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he put that ta'alluq in your heart to him, and to his people, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be in situations and in places that remind you of him. So Allah send you this beautiful gift. This is the hadiyatun min Allah. This is a minna min Allah. So Allah, he's sending you that gift. And what do we do? We reject it. We say, oh, no, no, I'm, 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 not, I'm not that religious. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm modern, you know. 
So we, we, we use word, fancy words to push our distance ourselves, to close off that wijha that Allah has made for you. He made that opening. You can be whoever you want. Nobody's interviewing or screening or, right? What do we say about our center? We say open, inviting, compassionate, right? And we wish that all the masajid will be the same way. But make no doubt, this is a place which is dedicated until Yom Al Qiyamah to the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We don't. Believe, you cannot. Uh, there's an Egyptian saying, right? Dukhul al Hammam zay khurugu. Right? So the Arab speakers, they know, they said, when you leave the restroom, it's not like how you enter, right? So does it, is it possible that somebody will come into the masjid when your cup is empty and you will leave the masjid in the same condition? No, your heart is full. When you leave the masjid, if you leave this, this jalsa and your heart is not full, then I didn't do my job. Then I did something wrong. It should be overflowing. Because of that ta'aluk, that connection. So don't you be the one that inhibits that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is giving you and giving you and giving you. There was a man that came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah. He, he was in a state of panic. He said, you have no idea what kind of person I am. You have no idea how bad I am. I'm, I'm, this is hyperbole. It's not the exact words. He said, if you took all of my sins and you were to spread it all over the earth, it would cover the entire face of the earth. The Prophet ﷺ, with no hesitation. By the way, a lot of us, if somebody came to us and they said, I did this, I did this, I did this, I, this kabira, that kabira, this major sin, that major sin, what would we say? Man, you're a really bad person. That's not what the Prophet ﷺ said. Immediately, with no hesitation, he said, Allah will forgive you. يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ حَسَنَاتِ He's the one who can change all of these deeds. They shift it from this side to the other side. All the evil deeds, the sins, they can be hasanat. They can be good deeds. And he said, but, he said, Ya Rasulullah, but my ghadarat, but my fajarat, but all of my transgressions, all of my sinfulness, all of it, there's no limit, there's no condition, there's no fine print. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, yes, all of it, all of it. Embrace that moment, receive it. So you're not going to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's part of this. That means that you're not going to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is really iqbal ala Allah. You are actually receiving something from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So you have to embrace that moment. Ask for forgiveness. Be humble. Embody humility. The scholars, they say, these are the nafahat rabbaniya. The nafahat rabbaniya. These are the divine winds that come to the person. They stick to the humble person. And so other people, they don't experience it. They don't feel it. They say, what nafahat rabbaniya? What divine winds? But if you're ready to receive it, then you're able to catch that. And uh, many of the scholars, they used to say, they said, if you're ready to receive rain, don't stop at the top of the mountain. You stop at the, you go in the top of the mountain, you're not going to get much water. You have to stand at the bottom of the mountain so that all of the water will flow down to you and you can receive it. So the futahad, these openings, they come after profound humility. So that ta'aruf is what Allah is bringing to you. He gave you this, and this is the difference between Allah bringing something to you versus you going to him in order to take something. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting the instilling in you that love, that connection, Allah, like if you're able to open the Quran, this is a big one. Some people, you know, it's hard for them to read the Quran. But as soon as they hear the Quran, they can't stop it. They have to listen to it. They're just struck by the... Some people don't even understand the Arabic language. They're just struck by the beauty. I mean, I have seen that here in ICCP. So many people, they don't know even a few words of the Arabic language. But they hear Qari Anas recite the Quran 
and you see the tears flowing from their face. You know, to be frank, sometimes I see people crying from the Quran that don't understand it. And my first thought in my, I'm like, shame on me. Because I understand the Quran. I spent all these years under, trying to understand the Quran and studying it. So then I'm embarrassed that I should be even more intense in, in, in connecting with the Quran that the person who's just like, it sounds so beautiful. It has to be from Allah. It can be from anyone else. So alhamdulillah for that. Embrace the moments of qab, of restriction. Embrace the moments of bust, of expansion. In many cases, the scholars said actually you have to receive it with the opposite. When Allah restricts you in your life, you have to have openness. When Allah presents something open to you, then you have to receive it with the opposite uh, thing in the best of states. Free from any faults, free from any distractions, full of sincerity. Man yunib wa yahdi ilayhi man yunib, the one that returns back to him. So you have to be in awe of these waridat. In the end of it, he said, compared to what you give. So every time you have a small roadblock, so many of us, we say, oh, I'm going to have the best Ramadan ever. Then the kids don't let you leave. You can't pray taraweeh. People have a newborn baby. They're used to doing taraweeh every year. You know, I've been through that experience. I went through my whole life. I never missed, missed taraweeh. Then I had a newborn baby and I was like, oh, is taraweeh that important? <laughs> it's optional, you know, because then life happens and you get and you're frustrated and you're like, oh, this Ramadan is not the same. I'm missing it. Or COVID happened. That was a big one. People, some people they said this was the best Ramadan I ever had. Other people said this is the worst Ramadan I ever had because there was a roadblock. People have needs, family have needs, spouse has needs, children have needs, bills keep coming. And we said, oh, there's so many things that are pulling me away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِذَا أَرَدْتَ أَن تَعْرِفْ مَقَامَكْ If you want to know your position before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then see where Allah has placed you. The thing which is making you upset may be the very opening that Allah is giving you a chance that you can get close to Him. It might not be the salah that you wanted. You might not be able to do tahajjud like you used to do. But you might be able to do another action which is actually going to bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than you realize. So Allah chooses chooses what is best for us. So in conclusion, something that I think will make all of these points clear is to understand that the spiritual path is not linear. That thinks, we think like we're moving, we're moving. Okay, I was there before, now I'm here. So we see like, oh, I was able to do this previously, now I'm not. I have some setback. Every time we have a setback, so, oh, I was feeling like, really spiritual last year, but this year I'm not feeling the same. Al-Iman Yazid wa Yanqus. Iman, it increases and decreases. But this whole world is Dar al isaa This is Dar al-Imtihan. This is a place of hardship, of sadness, of trial, of tribulation. And so that expectation that every, that spirituality has to be something sublime and beautiful and transcendent that it has to be something which is pleasurable then are you really seeking connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way that he wants or are you seeking something which is pleasing to you and something that you're seeking so that requires an openness of the mind and a complete openness of the heart for whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and the last quote I'll mention from Ibn Ajiba, he said that for uh, that we call the tribulations Laylatul Qadr. We call the tribulation Laylatul Qadr because through the tribulation, through Allah giving you a musibah, it allows you to achieve what you could not achieve in an, in an entire lifetime of worship. That Layla in which you have hardship and difficulty. That could be your Laylatul Qadr. So don't fear tribulations, especially the ones which allow you to get closer to Allah subhanahu.
subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that openness of the mind, of the soul, that I'm exactly in the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to be in, and that this is a gift. It requires shukr. Alhamdulillah, he chose me. He selected me. It's not a matter of deserving it. I don't deserve it. I'm not worthy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen me nonetheless. That's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will allow you to love yourself. And the more you love yourself, the more you love Allah. The more you love your Rabb. Because you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He only wants what's good for you. And the things which are good for you sometimes will be pleasant and sometimes they will be unpleasant. And these are all from the putuhat. These are all from the nafahat rabbaniyah. These are from the divine winds. These are from the divine openings. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahumma iftah alayna putuh al-arifin. May Allah give us the openings of the people who know him. Allahumma iftah lana putuh al-arifin abik. Those who know you, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he illuminates our hearts with the nur of ma'rifah, with the light of getting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we'll conclude with some of the adhkar. Uh, and especially with the salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we begin with alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah. Ya Haq, Allah is Al Haq. He is the truth. He is the one who is aware of everything. Ya Haq. Ya Haq, 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 Haqqiqni, 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 Allah is al Hay al he is the one who is alive and he is the disposer of all affairs. Ya hai, 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 there is nothing which truly exists except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is al-awwal, the first, he is al-akhir, he is the last. Allah, 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 Allah. Ya Allah, 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 Bi Rahmatika Nastaghith. We are seeking your Rahma and your mercy with the best of all remembrance of you, the kalima tayyibah 
of La ilaha illallah, 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 La ilaha illallah. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله حسب ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا 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 الله حسب ربي جل الله ما في قلبي غير الله نور محمد صلى الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله حسب ربي جل الله لا إله إلا الله uh, As you know, we still have uh, a little, almost half of the month of Rabi al-Awwal and in fact, all of the days are good to uh, remember and do send salawat on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In fact, the Prophet sallam said that even if you were to do all of your adhkar, all of your remembrance would be salawat, then you would have done well. So we'll read a part of the qasida burda, and we will conclude with that, inshallah. Oh, we have we have qari anas, so you have to do it then. <laughs> Next time, inshallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, kif halkum. So you guys, you guys know the Mawla Ya Salli, right? Just do the very beginning, inshallah. Amin tadhakkuri jiranin bidhi salamin Mazaj tajam'an jaramin muklatin bidami Am habbatin rihu min tilqai kazimatin أو أما أو 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 مضى البرق في الظلماء من إضمي فما لعينيك إن قلت كفوفا همت وما لقلبك إن قلت استفق يهمي أيحسب الصب أن الحب منكتم ما بين منسجم منه ومضطرمي I think many of you know Mawla ya salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayril khalqi kullihimi Again Mawla ya salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayril khalqi Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alihi. Barakallahu feekum.